example two here, it says given f at x equals negative two uh, x minus three all squared plus eight, graph f at x and its inverse. So I'm gonna go graph f at x in y equals f at x in blue, and then I'm gonna go graph the other one in red. So what's the quickest way to graph a parabola? Uh, to graph a parabola, since it says graph, you need five points. Now the most crucial point, since this is already in vertex form, the most crucial point is writing down the vertex. The vertex is 3, 8, because h is 3 and your k is 8. Then you should pick two points to the left of this, which is 2, 1, and two points to the right, which is 4 and 5. Now, since this is the vertex, we know for a fact that this graph is perfectly symmetrical on both sides of the, of the vertex, so the heights are the same on both sides. So in reality, all I have to figure out is what the heights are on one side, and that's exactly what the heights are on the other side. So using my formula of f at x equals all this, so it's y equals negative 2, x minus 3 all squared plus 8, I'm going to plug in x equals 2 and see what the height is. So y equals negative 2, and then I'm plugging in 2 for x, all squared plus 8. So I get y equals negative 2, and then this is going to be negative 1, all squared plus 8. So this is going to be y equals negative 1, all squared is 1, times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 8. That is equal to 6. So when x is 2, the height is 6. That means when x is 4, the height is 6, because we know that on both sides of the parabola, the parabola is perfectly symmetrical on both sides of the vertex. So I figured out the height was 6 when x is 2. Now again, using that same formula, negative 2 x minus 3 squared plus 8, I'm going to figure out what the height is when x equals 1. So y equals negative 2, and this is going to be 1 minus 3 all squared plus 8. So y equals negative 2, and this is going to be negative 2 squared plus 8. I'll do this in one shot. Negative 2 all squared is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 8, so that's equal to 0. So when x is, zero, x is 1, y is 0, that means when x is 5, y is 0 because on both sides of the parabola, or on both sides of the vertex, the parabola is perfectly symmetrical. Now, now we go to plot these points. I have 1, 0. I have 2, 6. I have 3, 8, 4, 6. And I have 5, 0. Connecting these points, that's what the parabola y equals f at x looks like. Now, when we go to take the inverse of this thing, remember what it said at the top, if a parabola is opening down, the inverse will be a parabolic relation that will open to the left. Now, I will go take the inverse of this thing. Now, in order to take the inverse of a parabola, I would never determine the equation first and then try to come up with points from that equation. That's just that's really crazy and uh, it's just, you don't need to do that because there's a much easier way. Since you already have points that are on the parabola that you first found, these are easy to find. Remember vertex, two points to the left, two points to the right, and the heights are the same on both sides. You just have to plug in two numbers to figure out the heights and they're the same on the other side. So now to find the inverse of this thing, just take the inverse of these points. One, zero, the inverse is zero, one. 2, 6, the inverse is 6, 2. 3, 8, the inverse is 8, 3. 4, 6, the inverse is 6, 4. 5, 0, the inverse is 0, 5. So just inverting your x's and your y's. Now when I go to graph this, I'm going to have 0, 1, which is right there. I have 6, 2, so 6, 2. I have 8, 3. I have 6, 4. And I have 0, 5. So the new relationship, the inverse of that parabola will look like that. It will open sideways like that. Clearly, the inverse of that thing is not a function because when x is 6, for instance, you have two different heights. The original was a function. And again, just as reminding you 
that this line, y equals x, this inverse function of the parabola is just a direct reflection on the y equals x axis. So if you can imagine the y equals x axis is a mirror, anything that was on this side of the mirror is now on that side, anything that was on this side is now on that side, interchanging your x's and your y's. So that's the easiest way to graph a inverse function using the first graph of the parabola. Now, question B though asks us to come up with the equation of the inverse. So that's a different story. If we need the equation of this inverse, well, the equation of the original one, remember, is negative 2x minus 3 squared plus 8. So I'm going to write it as y equals negative 2x minus 3 squared plus 8. So that was the original one. Yes, it was. And so the first thing you do is make sure x's and y's are written. The second thing you do is make sure it's in vertex form. So it's in vertex form. Now I can come up with the inverse. The first thing you do is invert your x's and your y's. So inverting my x's and my y's, wherever I see a y, I write an x. And wherever I see an x, I write a y. Remember, it has to be in vertex form for you to go find the inverse. If it is not, first put it in vertex form, then find the inverse. And then solve for y. So how do I solve for y? I have to isolate for y. So all this stuff is, is uh, connected here. So I'm going to bring this 8 over first. So this would be x minus 8 equals negative 2, y minus 3, all squared. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide out, I'm going to rewrite this, I'm going to divide out the negative 2 from both sides. So dividing out negative 2, and I'll get rid of this. So I end up with y minus 3, all squared. And then over here on this side, I'll have x minus 8 all over negative 2. The next thing I do is take the square root of both sides to get rid of that square over there. So that will get rid of the square. And so what I'm left with is, remember, when you take the square root of something, this is plus and minus the square root of x minus 8 all over negative 2. That is equal to y minus 3. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the 3 to the other side. So this will be plus or minus the square root of x minus 8 all over negative 2, and outside I have plus 3. So this is my final uh, equation, and I'll rewrite it like this. Now your book may not write the 3 afterwards. It may write the 3 at the beginning, plus or minus the square root, and then you'll have this x minus 8 all over negative 2 like that. It can also, your book normally does not have a negative sign on the bottom. You'll normally write it up top. So it'll actually write it like this. It'll write the 2 on the bottom. It'll write the negative out in front of the x minus 8. So it may write it like that. So just be aware that it writes it like this. Now if the 3 comes afterwards or before, I'm OK with either way. And of course, you can come up with a domain range by looking at the original picture. And so. Last example here, if I take a look at example 3 here, it says a rock is thrown down from a cliff that is 80 meters high. So it's thrown down from a cliff that is 80 meters high. The function is h of t equals negative 5t squared plus 80, and it gives the height of the rock above the water where h of t is the height in meters and t is time in seconds. So it wants us to state the domain and range of h of t. Determine the model that best describes time in terms of height, and then determine the domain and range of the new model. So if I take a look at this quickly, I have h of t equals negative 5t squared plus 80. Now, the first question is, is this in factor form, vertex form, or standard form? And the correct answer would